It's 2012. Temple Run is on your phone. Obama is the president and Canon releases its first cinema camera ever, the original C300. This camera, when it was first announced, was over $20,000. What did he say? Hey. And you can actually get it used now for under a thousand. In fact, I only paid $900 for it. What? In this video, we're gonna answer the question, is the original C300 still worth it in modern day? And get some test footage here in this arcade. Now, even in 2011, the fact that this camera could only shoot in 1080p was a pretty big deal. The same day that Canon released this camera, RED announced the original Scarlett, which was doing raw 4K recording. So almost everybody in the high-end filmmaker world poo-pooed this camera and said, what? It only does 1080p? But here's where Canon had a trick up their sleeve. The sensor in this camera was actually a 4K sensor that was doing a 1080p down sample, which made the 1080p essentially look like 4K even though it was 1080p. This was a smart move because they kind of leaned into the limitations of the processing, but also the limitations of the modern day computing. When this camera came out in 2011, computers were still having a hard time dealing with 4K files. So Canon made really the perfect all around everyday shooter camera. And that's exactly what happened with the original C300. The thing is the C300 was a massive success at the end of the day. When it was first announced, it was kind of seen with low fanfare. But when people started using these cameras, they realized how special and how unique this tool was in the marketplace. In fact, the original C300 went on to become the industry standard for run and gun documentary style shooting. HBO, Vice, and many other companies adopted this camera as their primary workhorse. And to this day, it's still being used in the field. It has built-in NDs, it has two XLR ports, it has an EVF and a monitor, as well as the ability to accept EF lenses, which you have to put yourself in the 2011 shoes was really revolutionary. Before then, we had camcorders with very small sensors and built-in bad lenses to do run and gun documentary style shooting. This was the first real hybrid of what Canon learned from their success of the 5D and the 7D implemented into an actual cinema camera. And it was a huge success. And one of the things that made this camera so great, of course, is the Canon color science. This camera had the original Canon log. It was the first time we ever saw it actually. And it has a nice eh, 10 to 11 stops of dynamic range. In addition to the great color science that this camera provided, it also had a higher bit rate than cameras at the time. In 2011, most DSLRs and even some lower end cinema cameras could only record an 8-bit 420. This camera can record an 8-bit 422, which was a big feature at the time. It also had two memory card slots so that you can have a backup of your recording as you're filming. I mentioned again this great EVF. I love this EVF. It's one of the big features that people loved about it. And this screen, again, was just really useful, very easy to manipulate, a lot of great features about this camera. It really had everything packed into one, and that's what people loved about it. You didn't have to kit it out, you didn't have to buy any extra accessories. This one tool served almost all your needs as a video professional. Now let's talk about some of the downsides of the original C300. First off, there's no built-in mic. For some reason, back in 2011, a lot of the cinema cameras didn't have even a scratch audio microphone in the camera. That means if you don't plug in, on the little mic jack or into the XLR port and you hit record, there's gonna be zero audio which means some people would film a whole shoot without audio and not even think about it. I personally use this tiny little powered Sennheiser mic and it gets the job done. It's just for scratch audio, so even though my monitor gets in the way of the mic. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't matter because it's just there to record something in the camera. Now the second downside about this camera, and it was even annoying back in the old days, was the fact that the recording format on these memory cards would basically break up your clips into multiple clips. So let's say you film an hour talking head shot. Because the cards weren't fast enough back then and because of whatever is going on in this camera, basically that one hour clip will turn into like five or six mini clips that you have to stitch together and post. Sounds exhausting. Some cameras still do this to this day actually on even modern cameras, but it's a real annoyance in my opinion. The next downside, which I think is more of a modern inconvenience, is the cards that are used. These are original CF cards, not C fast cards. Those didn't even exist back then. This is an old CF card. Now at the time, this was actually the definitely the right thing to do. Everybody was using 5D Mark II or the 7D 
cameras. And that's what those cameras used as well. So it totally mixed in fine with what everybody was used to. But nowadays these cards are not used at all on any cameras. So you're gonna have to use a specific reader and you're gonna have to pick these up either secondhand or actually you can buy them still brand new on certain websites. Like Amazon, have you ever heard of it? So should you buy this camera now, even though it's over 10 years old? Well, it depends on your use case. I'll tell you why I purchased one. I use this on a tripod for my podcast. I record internally in 1080p because I'm doing over hour long podcasts. I have multiple other cameras and I don't care about 4K. I don't care about autofocus or any of those things. I just want something that I can plug into the wall that has good Canon color science that's reliable and gets the job done. In my use case, I found this to be a really wonderful addition to my other Canon lineup. Even though this camera is old, it actually acts as a nice little tripod camera for my particular podcast setup. So those are the reasons why I have one, but should you get one? Honestly, if you're just getting started in filmmaking and maybe you're using a small DSLR or hybrid type camera, I do think this is a valuable tool to get in the modern day. You can get one for under a thousand dollars. It has all the pro features that you need to show up on set and be competent as a shooter. And if you're not needing 4K or if the client doesn't even know, you could probably up res it to 4K and they would never even notice. You could probably get by with using this as your primary workhorse. Heck, it worked totally fine for HBO, Vice, and many other films. And again, this camera was worth $25,000 with modern inflation. That means you, as a beginner, can buy a tool for under $1,000 that was used in Hollywood, so you have no excuse. Tell a good story and use whatever camera you can get your hands on. In my case, the C300 is a wonderful tool for anybody getting started and an additional side tool for people who have high-end production stuff. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below and watch our comparison where we compare this C300 to other modern high-end 4K cinema cameras. I'm Dave Mays, this is Soundstripe, and we'll see you next time.